starting in January 68, um, Hello Goodbye was at number one. There was the announcement that they were going to go to India. Apple was setting up uh, at the beginning of the year as well. Uh, Harrison had just started his solo work out in Bombay, so there's, all, there's a lot going on for the Beatles. It was not an unusual period, but I think the turning point was going to Rishikesh. Um, and the whole year for them was, you know, contradictions, but they went to Rishikesh and produced probably some of the best material they'd ever written. And th some say 30, 40 songs could be more. That lasted them throughout the, the whole career. So you have this thing there, apparently they were splitting up, they weren't getting on, and yet they come back with a a wealth of material from, from India to come back here and stuff. Yeah, this whole thing about not getting on, so I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. I mean, why would you go on a holiday with each other if you didn't get on for a start? That would yeah, be my first yeah, question. Yeah. And then you come back, and the, the first thing they made was the Isha demos, which which were which were you hear the, 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 this, this body of work, the White Album, was different from, say, Sgt. Pepper's because it did become a little bit more personal. It was like, this is my song and how, we, how are we going to treat it, lads? That comes across. And the Isha demo is almost like around a campfire where you hear them singing, you hear the other members of the band in the background tapping along and singing along. Mm -hmm. Again, not a band that not, that's, 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 that's falling apart. I go to studio outtakes and, you know, Actually, you talk to Ringo and Paul now, and they go, the White Album, this 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 time, well, this was the band's album. This is the band-making album, and that's what you hear yeah. on the outtakes. So I looked yeah. I looked in all, in all this material. I look for the arguments because it's fun. You know? Yeah, but and it is, I suppose it captures four individuals doing the thing as well, rather than... Uh, no, I don't think it does. It does No, I think, it, I think you, what it captures is, is, is a band working together. I and mean, working differently though, I think this is where the confusion comes, they were working separately, your dad was in and out, we're having to wait around. I, th no. I think the difference is actually, someone like Sgt Pepper is, is, has a blueprint, and I think their albums had a blueprint of sound, and they would go in, and they would go, okay, my dad was the architect, and he would go, okay, listen chaps, what we're going to do here is this, and they would come in. The White Album, they, they, they knew they were building something, they did it from brick by brick all the way up, and I think it's because they didn't play live as a band together anymore. Mm. They already, if you think about it, Really, up until with before Sgt. Pepper, they they were going on tour. They played Candlestick Park, and they were going on tour. Yeah, and they were, yeah. but with the White Album, they didn't play live ever, apart from in the studios. Mm. And so, therefore, they indulge themselves more. And you don't, you know, you don't lock yourself in a, in a cupboard and do Yeah Blues in a cupboard if you don't Indeed. like each other. Yeah. You don't, you know, you listen to on, on the tapes I was going through. You listen to a version of Happiness is a Warm Gun. Mm. And John says, you know, it's not, it's getting better, it's not getting any more fun. And George goes, it is getting more fun, John. He goes, is it? He goes, yeah, great. And that's mm. not, and George was one of the most, you know, as, as Paul says, we always had George. If we, we, if we didn't do, do, don't want to do anything, George yeah. would go, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I, I just wonder what the expectation was for that album in 68 with, by the press of the fans, and uh, indeed at Abbey Road, or within the organisation. I'm not too sure what anyone was expecting. I think it was a, such a a diverse and sprawling piece of work when you can, the, the, the cohesion of, well it wasn't so, the, the glorious layered Sergeant Peppers and you get something that's very sparse, very beautiful, very loud and it is an album, and it, a year like I said to you before, a year of contradictions within the band, there was obviously there was a lot of creative energy going around as you can, as you, by listening from start to finish, it's so diverse isn't yeah. it? Yeah, but I don't think, you know, I don't think, I don't think the Beatles, I think the, I think the White Album Reflected the time in '68 of the uh, there was a lot the, the Vietnam War. I mean, a lot of there was lots of civil rights. You know, you got Blackbird, you got Happiness is a Warm Gun. There's a lot of that mm -hmm. going on, and they're actually kind of irrelevant today, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. But you don't get you don't make an album like the White Album, which is that diverse and strident. If you and if you're in a band, you really don't like each other. Because what happens, mm. you tend to nullify each other. You go, I'm not doing that. I'm, well, I'm not doing that then. And you yeah. get that. Yeah. Where they did to, to throw themselves into these different tracks. I mean, mm. obviously there are... I mean, I did a playback in New York. There's a session, there's an outtake of I Will, where there's, there's John, Paul and Ringo. And they're in the studios and they do, they're, they're doing I Will together, live, three of them. And they do a song called Lost Paranoia. They sing Blue Moon. Mm. And a journalist said to me, I read that I Will was just Paul on his own, a solo. So I went, yeah, I went, yeah, it wasn't. And he goes, no, but I read it was. I went, who, who, who are the other two guys? I went, well, that's John Lennon and Ringo Starr and they're having a laugh in the studios. Yeah. But I read that it wasn't. I was like, well, I, you know, what can <laughs> what I say? And say? as Paul says to me, because yeah. there was only four of them and they can't remember it. So how, you know, it's, and, and I think what happened with the White Album is that, you know, John did a bunch of interviews and said, you know, that was the sound of the band breaking up and all this kind of stuff went on. Yeah. 
I hate to say it, but I think he, you know, it's not what it's not what you get on the tapes. And it'd be this would be really interesting if it was what you get on the tapes, but it just doesn't want it's, it's not. What but it right, like. bang in the middle of that year, they uh, they went to America to promote Apple, John and Paul. If you've seen any of those interviews from that period, no. they are getting on and taking the the rip out the interviewees. That this, I couldn't spot any tension. I thought they were quite enjoying what we we're going to set up this organisation where we're going to get all these weird artistic people, you know, like Mad Alex and these people, and we're going to fund, you know, independent film and all the rest of it. And it was very sort of idealistic, but there was no tension. But there was, but there was, and Paul, they are brilliant at press yeah, interviews yeah, anyway. Yeah, they but Paul were. and John did. I mean, they, you know, I think that, I think it's funny, if, if there's anything on the white album with Ringo, Ringo did walk out, and I think it's because Paul was And your dad went on holiday as well. I, did went on holiday. I, think, I think John and Paul were super close to the white album. Yeah. I mean, when I, you know, I have to play back, I don't have to, actually I do, play back, <laughs> play back Paul the mixes, you know, because it's his record. So we, we, I remix the white album, he comes in there, my boss is, he comes in. Right. Paul came, in, came into the studios, and he goes, I, I love, can I hear Julia? And I'm thinking, that's, yeah. a, that's a weird choice. He's on it though, isn't he? Well, he's, he's, no, he's just, in, it's, it's just, it's just, just John, it's just John yeah. on his own. But he was very much part of that recording yeah. session. But he and would have been there then, He would have, he would have yeah, been there. And it's that thing where my dad always used to say, working with bands, it's a bit like showing a wedding photograph. doesn't yeah. matter who's wearing it, you always look at yourself. Yeah. You know, well, you where do, am I? Do, that's yeah. what you do. Yeah. And that's normally the case with singers. But in that case, it was very much a lot of collaboration between John and Paul. And the thing about the Beatles is that no matter what's written or what's said, they never lost that. You can probably make the song better. Here's my song. Yeah, what can you add to yeah. it? And that's what you hear in the White Album. You hear that sort of collaboration come across. Perhaps he really likes Julia. Probably really genuinely likes it. Never told John that it's at a, the time. You don't know, do you? I mean, it's, uh, it's as, as... I think they were quite frank with each other. <laughs> well, I'm, I don't think I'm, they I'm glad to believe it yeah, was. I don't, yeah, I don't, I very much, you know, I doubt, I doubt. It's like that story about Hey Jude, when he, you know, your hand yeah. is upon my shoulder. Yeah, yeah. And he yeah. goes, I'm going to get rid of that line, John. He goes, that's, that's the only good line in the song. <laughs> that's, what, that's what John said. But the, you get to the opening track, which is... A, it's such a brilliant opening as a, as a, as a record, isn't it? Yeah. It, but... but it doesn't actually reflect what's going to go beyond it, but it's just a terrific opening, and and I don't know what you've done with it. It's just got a little bit of sparkle. I don't want to. You don't have to tell me the magic. I, but there, I, I could you know. I could, there, there's no magic. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're not supposed to answer like that, though. Yeah, no, yeah, we'll edit that out. No, I tell you what, it is. It's it's back. It's back I mean, all of these songs are fragile because they're so brilliant. But back in the USSR, and I think it's because of the technology at the time. Everyone's worried about the needle jumping out of the group. Has no, the original has no bottom end on it. No. And so the it all sounded a bit. Dull. So yes, well, technology's moved. It has, it has, it has no. It has no bottom yeah. end. It has. Yeah. It's very. There's no bass on the original back in the USSR, and so there's now bass on the USSR. It's got a DC ten jet engine at the start of it. What more do you want? Yeah, it's it's like awesome. incredible. But yeah, it's a great. But it's that. That's so the that's thing. The it's excitement. Like, thing. But you say it, you say it's a great opener, but doesn't 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 really reflect uh, reflect what's going on. Yeah, but yeah. There's not a single song in the white that reflects no, what's true, coming yeah. after it. Yeah, I mean that's why it's their best album. There's it's so diverse, and we could talk about. I don't want to mention the word contradiction again, but if you listen to... Let's, let's start with something. We've mentioned Julia. Such a beautiful, simplistic, and this, this kind of picking style that Donovan and Out in the Sunshine and Richard Cashy started to, and I think yeah. they all started doing it. But it's just simplistic, and it's a very heartfelt song, Julia, isn't it? For yeah. somebody whose perception is, is angry, he's on drugs... He wants this peace thing, and he's, he's a song that essentially it might be about yoga, but it's about his mother. He's got all these things in there, but it's such a tender, a yeah, tender but, record, isn't it? Well, that, I mean, yeah, but John was tender. I mean, you know, yeah, well, of course, if, yeah, if, yeah. If yeah. you think about John's, I mean, so like, I mean, it was you very know, acerbic. I mean, though, yeah, I mean, but yeah. I mean, you know, imagine. Yeah, you know, well, yeah, it's, yeah. You know, well, it's the peace thing in the background, wasn't it? Yeah. Across the universe, which is the yeah. same period across the universe yeah. as the White Album sessions, yeah. there was there was a. Yeah, I mean, there was a beauty to his voice. Mm. In fact, there's a there's an outtake we found at the back end of one of the tapes. Voice on that, isn't it? Yeah, 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 that, yeah. That, he, that he's talking to my dad, and he's he's trying he's trying to strum it because he's he's worried about the way he sings it and finger picks at the same time. That took yeah. him a while to get yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot going on. And he goes, he goes, it's very hard song. To, it's very hard song to sing this. And he's talks and he starts singing, and it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. Yeah, it's and fast, and the yeah. thing about that is that it makes you realise that. The reason why he sounds like John Lennon because because he is John Lennon. He's bearing his soul, though, isn't he? Yeah, but he's just really good as well. Yeah, yeah, and another, quite possibly one of the greatest compositions, Dear Prudence, is on that. It's a very the same technique and everything, but and uh, another song in Richard Cash, which is just incredible. Yeah. Um, 
it's simple but complicated at the same time. It's just, we all know that rundown, don't we? Yeah, and it's, it's Paul playing drums. Yes. And a lot of people don't yeah. realise that. That was yeah. when Ringo had gone, gone on a hold inside, didn't it? Just it brushes? I don't know what's in that. No, it's, 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 it's there, it? yeah. It's is a, it? There's the, the crazy bits at the end. All oh, right, yeah, of course. It's very yeah. Ringo. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But it's, you know, the, 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 what would I think we're saying with those songs, it's, very del it's a very delicate yeah. album. And, yeah. and then, you know, I think one of the, 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 the things that I would latched onto when I was a kid, not necessarily remembering when it first came out, because I'm far too young, but... Um, Glass Onion is the nearest thing I think they sounded to Stax or Motown. I've got to get you into my life, it's supposed to be a Motown record, but the Glass Onion thing is just, people don't really remember that record, but it's such a, it's, it's on the beat and it's, it's got like a, like that Stax sound. Yeah. They're not yeah. your influence. In a funny way, Savoy Truffle as well. Yeah, yeah there are, there are, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that, yeah, that's yeah. like Booker T and the MGs yeah, yeah, or something, yeah. is it? You know, it's, it's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, I think, the way I, the way I think of the White Album, it's an album that constantly slaps you across the face. It's like just when you think you're, oh, okay, I know where I am. It's like, yeah. no, yeah. you're not. You know, wake up. Yeah. And I think we miss that today. You know, the fact that there's, we find comfort in the fact that we can easily switch something off. You know, my kids, my kids are in a car and they'll go hear this song, Dad, and it'll last about 45 seconds and they'll play another song. That's quite a long time for kids, 45 seconds. <laughs> yeah, so they can't reach the controller, <laughs> slap them on the hands. Yeah, yeah but there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's that. And there's the beauty of a record like the White Album where a track you, makes you feel uncomfortable, you have to sit through. Yeah, there's a lot of them on that. Let's talk about the chronology of Revolution then. There was, let's get this right, the slower version was the first one. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Tell me about that. And then the single version was done later. And in between you had Revolution number nine. Yeah, so Revolution number one. So it's a bit like a... It, it does, yeah. So yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like a bit like a gin, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'll take mine with yeah, cucumber. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> write that one down. Yeah. <laughs> it's Beatles merch. Yeah. No, it's... You know, Revol a gap in the market yeah, there. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. Revolution number one uh, was the first version and was recorded, recorded reasonably early on. Uh, What's interesting about that is there's a there's again and people think it's an outtake, but actually the re, the version the finished version of Revolution Number One goes on for ten minutes, oh, does it? Yeah, yeah. and so it fades out. But but you know it's on the it's on, it's on this box set. You you can hear ten minutes, and and actually John, you know, starts singing the refrain more and more, and all of the stuff that hear him screaming, which is on Revolution Number Nine, is on that bit take of Revolution Number One. Right. Okay. Yeah. And even Yoko's bit at the end, which is the, at the end of Revolution Number Nine. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Is on Revolution Number One. Okay. okay. Bear right. with me. There's, there's, there's there'll, be, there'll be questions later. Uh, I'll, I'll try. I'm trying my best. So that's the. So that's the. That was the. That was the. All of the crazy bits that you don't hear on Revolution Number One on the White Album because it fades out. Started making up Revolution Number Nine. Put that out to one side. Revolution Number Nine was a project, really, that was was John and Yoko and George, and then the others added on, and yeah. my dad got involved, and actually they all loved it. it wasn't It wasn't that. It, as a, it was as, divisive. Yeah, it, 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 it wasn't. It was divisive for the listener. But my dad, for instance, thought it was great. No, it is, you know, is that is that yeah. Yeah, because it, it's it is completely bonkers. It's kind of scary. Yeah, I mean, it's a lesser album if that was taken off. You know what I mean? It, 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 yeah, it, exactly it, right. It's a layer. And then, and then, Revolution the single because they realised it was such a strong track is was, was 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 made separately. Yeah. And it's funny. I was I was um, talking to some Chinese uh, last week, and they told me that record is still banned in China. Is it really? Yeah, because of the reference to Chairman Mao. Right. I think it's time to lift that. Yeah, well, you can barely, yeah, let's get rid yeah, of Trump. Yeah, and yeah. Let's, let's bring, let's yeah, bring yeah, peace to yeah, the world. Yeah, 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 rather you than me. You can, yeah. uh, but you can fight that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean, I suppose the background is now we say the, the, there's a, uh, with John getting into the peace movement and Joker was on the scene. So there's a lot of you, it, that context is kind of gone, but hasn't it with the album? There was, was, there was a, they were hippies, weren't they? Essentially, I mean, yeah, it's not really a hippie album, though, is no, it? Cause no, it's no, too, it's not. Well, people forget that uh, people forget the hippies are angry. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean you they? Could, yes, they were. Yeah, you mean you, you definitely demonstrated in yeah. 68, May 68. Didn't yeah, they? exactly. Yeah. You can't you can't really protest about stuff without you know. Yeah. And the white album, the white album does reflect that. It does ref, it does reflect that you know that time where the it's it's the it's it's a perfect sort of um, it's the summer of love was the year before. It was yeah. And yeah. and there's so many dark clouds within the music of the white album. Indeed, there that is. That break that it sunshine. There was demonstrations all around the world, yeah. in 68 Paris, etc., and you know, civil rights in, in America. It, it, as we talk like this, if that had been put into on the, the Mars probe or that thing that's still going in space, I can't remember, the, with uh, 
white album on and it was found like you know on another solar system they would no idea what was going on on the planet if they listened to that record would they it's not cohesive at all you know it's so there's nothing really like it is there for, the, for its time no and, and we've no, not even got to hell to skelter there's now, nothing there's nothing really like it and nothing since and i don't think a band can make an album like that now because they'd be no. accused of being derivative you know yeah that's yeah. A, and also yeah. you wouldn't be in a situation where the band had to you know it's funny when we do these projects like you know look at the white album, look at the archive it's really small it's like there's me and i have an engineer that I work with and then there's the beatles and that's it mm. that's it there's no one there's no there's no play it to a board and see what's it like yeah. and the way the white album was like that with the beatles because they even with my dad they were like this is the record we're going to make and there was no other interference but your dad got fed up of sitting around didn't he during that? He got fed up with the hours. He yeah. got fed up because he, he, he. Was it quite rigid early on, like nine to five or something? Yeah, days, I mean, they, yeah, they would they would record an album in a date initially, yeah, and then yeah. they would record and the EP. They would the do next three, day. three songs before lunch, and then yeah, yeah, and break, yeah. and, and yeah. that was it. And the white album was 106 takes of Sexy Sadie, yeah. and they would say to him, "You hear on the tapes." They would say to him, um, "What do you think, George?" And he go, "Yeah, that's what you know." Go, well, we'll, we'll tell you when it, we'll tell you when we got it. Twenty-two takes later. No, we, we no, and they'd say, "We'll tell you when we've got it." Oh, opposed right. to the around. Right. Okay. And I think that's a that, big change in dynamics. Yeah. Exactly. Isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. And so he just would go home. Yeah. The. I don't know how well it actually did and how it was received. It's their biggest selling record, isn't it? Is that right? Yeah. It's a, it's slightly confusing. I mean, they, they sold a lot of records, all the records, Obviously, yeah. but it's slightly confusing because I think in America it counts as two albums. Oh, right, okay. So it's their biggest selling record. Yeah. But I think I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. It's certainly, it's certainly, it did okay. <laughs> that was a slight understatement. <laughs> it's the there. biggest selling record of the biggest well, selling record. It was out in November. And then, uh, so it's a winter record in a set sense. It'd be out at this time of the, the year. The winter of love. The, the winter, winter of discontent. <laughs> the winter of love. I quite like the yeah. sound of that. And uh, what do you know of its, its reception at the time? It obviously went to number one. There was no problem with it. I'm just wondering what critically. It's very hard to sort of review that, wouldn't it? Yeah. You think? I don't, uh, if you think? They plunk the new Beatles record on you thinking, what's the follow up to Sergeant Pepper? You'd, I bet that caused the journalists to scratch their heads, really. It must be quite, but it's also quite weird in the Beatles because don't forget all of the singles that are punctuate with the album release. Yeah. You know, I mean, with Sgt. Pepper, there was Magical Mission Tour between those two. Yeah. There was, I think, uh, uh, and Yellow Submarine premiere, they think, was it around about this time Exactly as well. right. And then yeah. there's all the singles. All yeah. the singles that and came two out Virgins this time. was out as well, wasn't it? George's album came yeah. out at the same time. So, yeah, I think, I don't know, I don't know uh, what people thought of it. I, you know, I, I, I have no idea. I remember, I remember thinking... I remember being, having this sort of shadow of my, my, my dad, you know, I, used to try, I was trained underneath him, as people know, and yeah. would travel with him, and people, and especially in America, they, you know, you know they, they'd, they'd, he'd be doing other things, and people wouldn't be allowed to talk to the Beatles about him, of course they would, and they'd yeah. go, you know, yeah. I love the White Album, and yeah. he would just go, really? <laughs> would he? Yeah, oh yeah. What's like, is that what, through slight embarrassment or something? What is it? What, what? No, he just, and so I had this view that it was, it was, it was a miserable process. But it was for him, you know. It wasn't. It yeah. was surprising because don't forget, he was, he was the person that signed them. He signed them here at Abbey Road. He then made their records. He was their A and R record yeah. producer. And he and him and Brian, their Brian Epstein, had mm. had plans for them, and they'd always work on plans together. But they were A and R of them essentially as well. Absolutely right. Yeah. And they'd always think about what they're going to do. Think about single releases. You know, as he said, he made a math. They made a massive mistake releasing yeah. Sergeant Strawberry Fields and Payne Lane as a double A side. All this yeah. sort of stuff. It was all about that. And they had plans, and Sergeant Pepper was part of that plan. And Brian died. A magical mission tour thing started to come slightly yeah, unhinged for him. Well, yeah, yeah. And then the White Album. It was like I've completely lost control of the classroom here. It's gone completely mad. And this mm. isn't. This isn't. I thought we were going to make, uh, you know, some sort of huge concept thing. A bit like the second half of Abbey Road. That's what's his dream. Yeah. That's what he wants to do. Right. And the White Album isn't that. It's completely fragmented. Yeah. And it's it's it is the White Album. You know, it's not the kaleidoscope of sound he was creating with tamboras and orchestras and all that yeah. sort of stuff. And I think he found that very hard. And I think that's what his reaction was. I think in hindsight, he um, you know, he loved bits of it, mm. but he felt as though he'd lost the reins to a certain degree. Well, I mean, uh, uh, you know we began talking about you know it was slightly fractured but they were working just in a different way and they were all 
from time to time working on their own bits and which yeah. is too unusual if you think about it. Is it, no, it, is it it's, at all? And people it's quite read a, too much into that. It's quite a modern record in that way. In fact, yeah. when, when I played it to Paul, um, when I played the mixes to Paul, he goes, it's a, it's a surprisingly modern record, isn't it? That's what he said to me. It's yeah. like, you know, and it is. It's, um, you know, and the thing about the, just the hours they worked, you know, the Beatles sort of worked almost an hour and a half later every year mm. and they started and they work overnight on the White Album. And in those days, in 68, it's like no one worked overnight. I mean, the Abbey Road was closed. They had yeah. to break in to, to get milk out of the fridge. <laughs> and then no one was here. And, and they so, had to work at Trident for a little while. And so, well. and so, strange, so, yeah. so for the studios, the people in it, they were like yeah. going, what are we doing here? Yeah. And the funny thing is all, the people, all these people who write books now about their times with the Beatles, they're the people who are like, please don't put me on a Beatles session. Right. Uh, yeah, well, there is that. We're not met, talked about Helter Skelter. Could be the first proto metal record. I don't know. Maybe Hendrix might have beat them to it. I don't really know. And it's 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 such an unusual record. And the story is that he'd heard I could see for miles was the record. I've had a look at this one, and that came out prior in '67. And I think he wanted the energy of the Who, but because he, he mentions Paul, doesn't he? I'd heard something new. I can't remember which yeah, one. I, I think thought, it was I could see I for miles. Yeah, I originally thought that he read that. Fine. Pete 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 had Pete had, Pete had said in a doc in a in an interview. We made the loudest record ever. Yeah, in, in, in Melody Maker or something. Yeah, yeah that's true. And yeah. Paul went, well, until now. Yeah, that's right. the yeah. That's Don't the challenge me. That's the that's the you know the yeah. the fun thing about great artists. My dad was the same. The competitive nature is extraordinary. Is, yeah, is is, is yeah. and I think that I think that he um, I that was Helter Skelter. Yeah, that yeah. was the response. It was is that call and response. I mean, like you know. Back in the USA, as a response to mm. California girls, you know yeah, that's the reaction still, to worse. Yeah. yeah, yeah, completely. One final question: Is it unfair to ask you what, what you think is your favourite? What is your favourite White Album track? I think well, it's it's a toss up between. I think it's so you've it, gone to two already, haven't you? Yeah, well, yeah. I'll ask you the same question. <laughs> well, I can pick. I can yeah. possibly pick. Happiness is a warm gun. Yeah. Really grew on me as a, a mixing because you know we listen to the tracks again and again and again. And that's one of those really interesting. That's slightly blues number to begin with in the demos. Is that right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's the demo. The, the each demo is very different. You start seeing yeah. Yoko yeah, in yeah, that, yeah, yeah. but but that is such a an interesting track on the grounds that it doesn't have a chorus. That's right. Yeah, I've thought about it that. Just, and it Does it need one then, perhaps? And it reminds me of no. It reminds me of a Frank Zappa track. It yeah. reminds me of, like I used to love Apostrophe, that Frank Zappa album. No, no, wouldn't. And it, yeah, it's interesting. Is it? And yeah. it reminds me of that sort of just vocally and yeah, I just. I just think it's, it, and it's also, a, it's a very poignant and brave record for today, mm. especially, I mean, today, I think there's been something going on in America. Yeah. Um, uh, Blackbird as well. Blackbird, because, I mean, uh, Blackbird is one of those songs which is so beautiful and yet means so much, and yet it's such an amazing guitar part that you can learn how to play. Mm. You know, my found my, my kids trying to work it out the other day. I don't think I could do it. Oh, you could do it. Could I? Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll teach you. Give it a go when I go on. Yeah, All yeah. right, thank you. All right, we're done. It's all about the music. Virgin Radio.